it's now time for Energy Insights, where you get an inside view and local perspectives of all the oil and gas progress going on in the Mid-Ohio Valley. This program is being brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association and can be heard every Saturday at 9 a.m. on local radio WMOA AM 1490, and ESPN Radio WJAW FM 100.9 and AM 630. It's now time for the show. Here's Johnny Wharf, your local host. Johnny Wharf Energy Insights on a Saturday morning with uh, Honorable Representative Greg Walden from the Second Congressional District of Oregon, and we continue a conversation uh, that we started. We're on location, Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., and it's a powerful place to be. And uh, Congressman Walden serves on the most one of the most powerful committees on the Hill. Um, we want to talk about energy independence uh, as it relates to our area, as it relates uh, to globally. Like, what what does that mean? Somebody hears it, and it means probably different things to different people. Well, I, I would reverse it and say I, I'm old enough to remember the Jimmy Carter days and the days of the Arab oil embargo and spikes in gasoline prices and waiting lines and odd even license plates and a whole mantra about how we were going to run out of energy, how America was going to be dependent on foreign suppliers. Um, and every president thereafter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, everybody said, I'm going to get us to energy independence. And, and it's been a national goal for a very, very long time, decades and decades. And we're finally there. Um, we have finally achieved energy independence, which gives us great security on the energy sector and insulation in some large measure from international conflicts. Moreover, it's given us a better job base, economy base, in, in areas that frankly have struggled a lot. Um, I, I think about some of these regions uh, that, that suddenly have a very strong economy because of energy. And these jobs are high paying family jobs. Uh, I've, I've been up to, to North Dakota and around and I, I've, I've kind of laughed and I'll, I'll say this kindly but you know if you've been ranching in North Dakota all these years you deserve to fight an oil play under your ranch those are rough winters and and you know you see that you see it in these rural areas and it's it's transformational um, and it's it's healthy for for America they're good paying jobs I've been down to Texas I've you know uh, tracked this around the around the country and and these are real manufacturing jobs these are real good wage jobs these, and it it, it creates an energy independence that is extraordinarily important for America. And, yeah, and, and so and I, you kind of touched on it, but you know there are people out there that say I hear it, but I don't believe it. And well, what, what's going to do for me anyway? And and yet, it, how how far away is it? Is it really going to? going to bang or is it there you know that's the well, question I, I would just say with the uh, the conflicts that have gone on in the middle east that go on in a regular basis did you have to wait in line to get gas on an odd or even day based on your yeah. license plate that's that's the world i grew up in in high school and afterward where these these shocks were shocks to our economy they were shocks to our communities um and and they were very they were they caused real hardship and we've been able to get around that uh, because of the innovation in the energy sector. Um, and, but there's more to be done. There really is. And, and you know, you're going to see transformation in the oil and gas sector. Uh, you're going to see more and more electric vehicles. You're, you know, you've got the whole set of issues uh, in, involving corn and, and, and alternative fuel sources. And that's all going to come to a head with the EPA in 2024 or 2022. Um, and and so when it comes to ethanol, that's going to be a, a talking point and a policy shift. So there's going to be a lot of issues around um, uh, fossil fuels and and ethanol and and that type of energy. Uh, and then of course you've seen an enormous change in electricity generation, um, and and that's more on on the grid. It's more on renewables to where solar and wind now are competitive in pricing. Uh, you know, we, I'm not sure I thought we'd ever get there, but we're there. And they'll tell you that. The, so the wind energy industry has said, actually, we don't need subsidies anymore because we've gotten to the point that we're market rate. Well, that's where you want to get. But that's not firm base load power either. And we need both. So we need more renewables, but we need, we need advanced nuclear. Uh, our nuclear fleet is aging. Uh, while they're able to uh, expand the output through uh, uh, more reliability and modernization of existing plants, we're, we're not on a 
path right now uh, to maintain all of all of that uh, power. And I think we're leading in the world in nuclear energy production here in the U.S. or close to it. There, there, you know, we're right in the top couple of countries. And, and so, what's exciting is over the horizon, there's an effort to develop new, probably generationally new, uh, nuclear energy, small scale, um, that could have enormous uh, uh, effect in in communities, uh, especially rural and remote communities. I, I, I've got colleagues from Alaska that burn, you know, uh, oil uh, to generate electricity in the villages. Well, you could go completely carbon free at, at, with small scale nuclear at some point. Um, and that may work better for them. Uh, in other regions, uh, you'll have a different energy mix. And I think federally, we have to understand each region's going to be a little different. If you try to do a one-size-fits-all Washington-based standard, you're, you're going to cause all kinds of disruptions. Let the market work. It'll drive innovation. And if it drives competition, you'll get more innovation, more consumer choice, lower prices, and a stronger economy. And so count me in the, in the category that says put the consumer first. That's why he's the lead Republican on the Energy and Commerce Committee. That is the Honorable Representative Greg Walden, the second congressional district from Oregon. We thank you for your time. This conversation will continue on location, Energy Insights on Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. Thank you for listening to Energy Insights, brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association. Tune in every Saturday at 9 a.m. on WMO and ESPN Radio, WJAW, as Johnny Wharf brings you your local and inside perspectives of the oil and gas progress going on in the Mid-Ohio Valley. 